Okay, let's continue. Uh, I think it appears as if I'm offline, uh, isn't it? Uh, right now. It shows uh, like I'm offline. Doesn't matter. Let's load up. Overload. Say yes to overload. Synthetic stun, synthetic and shield damage, and impact ranges. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was checking that because. Uh, <laughs> ah, that's why uh, you put the grumpy face. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's continue! Well, how much money do we have? 83,000 grades. We're still... very far away from our good... payday. I think we're not in this cluster or system. Nebula. Nebula, it's actually a nebula. Okay, let's go back to Ilium. Let to travel to another one. Or maybe I should go to Ilium. Why not? Purchase whatever I can. Uh. Alright. More pictures of Kerrigan. Sarah Kerrigan. Does does the uh, protagonist have a name? I I think the protagonist is the man that appears in the box uh, in the cover. Ah, uh, there you go. Well, she is good looking. Let me. Holy shit! They really destroyed her. Those Zergs. Although I gave her a better outfit, if I might say so. <laughs> but uh, especially the hair. I like her hair much more when she was human. Maybe the eyebrows as well. Yeah. <laughs> Poor. Uh, Let's continue with our squad, which has been very effective. And they did not gain the squad points. What the fuck? Uh, okay. August Phalanx and Madoc. Ah, what, what? Who cares? I'm in Ilium. Obsessing out bullshit. That's an interesting rationale for uh, in depth, in depth, in depth your servitude. You train someone, you pay for the training in your company, but you could lose it to the competition. Yeah, you could lose them to the competition. So, <laughs> you make them work. <laughs> For you, forever. So their skills are now lost. Uh, that's an interesting. I didn't mean. Okay, look. I'll take another look at the contract. Maybe it needs to be reclassified. Forget it. Do whatever you want. Okay. It's just we're looking for yes. weapons. Yes. Shouldn't you be taking this seriously? Give me. I guess that's it. I don't have to come to Ilium ever again. Her first mate, your father, he got her things when he traveled. 
Huh. It's not a competition, Dad. You don't even really remember him. And she found me after he died. And I'm almost 35. Hey, I remember him. And I want to remember you. That's why I came on this trip. That's something sad. Eclipse might be fun for you. For me, it's the future. My clan's breeding strategy is at stake. Trust me, the goods coming in from the terminus systems are great for business. I don't know. Some of yeah. them seem dangerous. Solarian concern the salary. Will remember him. He had not 95% of her life with me. Without the king. Uh. Yeah. Somewhat sad. I would be a salary. Uh, not salarian, a salary. Every day or a salarian. I like. Uh, like the idea of living for thousands of years. Or at least a thousand years. Imagine the wonders. Imagine the games. <laughs> oh, it's a sad thing to say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's even less, it's even less. It's four percent of the Asari life span. Four percent, that's just sad. Okay. Yeah. Let's research this thing. I actually don't have to research it. No problem. I'm not to complain. But yeah, imagine the games, that's what I say. What games will we be missing that our children will be playing? Ishmael Frontier, I think I was coming from the left, wasn't I? Yeah. Now let's go to Ishmael Frontier. <coughs> Aquila. And Faia, I already explored most of it outside this cluster, it seems. Can it start? <sighs> Volturno, a so called Super Earth, Volturno is home to organic life, but it's nevertheless uninhabitable for the near future. Currently, in a nice age, most of the planet from the latitude of 30 degrees north or south is a frozen wasteland, and so most organic life. Limited to algae and lichens, resides near the equator. The strong variety prevents any sapient species but Elkor from thriving in the planet. And the Elkor cannot breathe, the planet has no atmosphere. Yeah. I run the... Which contains little amounts of carbon dioxide in addition to oxygen. So, small packs of Borcha. Ah, oh, the Borcha. The Borcha always turn out, don't they? Squatters are attempting to take the planet from themselves illegally, but most of them live all existences in the planet's crushing gravity and die from falls and medical complications. Only terraforming on a massive scale will turn Volturno into a hideable world, and the alcohol lack the political capital in the Citadel Council to begin such an effort. You know what would be interesting? An Asari Borja uh, child. How good? Why would that look? What kind of personality would that have? 
Give the only Grogan Asari uh, Asari that we have met was uh, very strange. How would our children think? The pini, a hydrogen methane gas giant, the pini and its moons have been a curiosity discovered by the space probes and found to have little in the way of rare resources. The galaxy is at large considers it unremarkable. I guess it, it's not, but we consider it unremarkable. Vecchio is a moderate sized terrestrial world with a thin, hot atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Initial surveys found that trace amounts of iridium, but little else of interest in the silicate desert sands that cover much of the surface uh, of the planet. The recent tour the Lions or Mayorship Coupe discovered a group of partial graves hidden in the Catrolial mountain ranges. The ancient skeletons in the burial sites are obviously humanoid but incomplete and poorly preserved, which has made them difficult to identify. Fragments of primitive ceramic grave goods were also found nearby. This raises further questions on who once started to this inhospitable planet since the closest garden world for Turno has no intelligent life, human universities are planning for the archaeological investigations. I would say it, it's months at the, at the most uh, weapons, because you're being uh, held on trial for whatever you need on arrival. Uh, so I would say it's months at the most, but I don't know for for sure. I don't know. Uh, and I, the hydrogen helium gas giant Meto, Metaponto has developed a helium three fueling station funded by Elcor Business Interest, who hope to bring enough attention to the system to attract or form investors, and thus eventually develop Volturno as a habitable world. Thus far, they have made little success. Yeah, I don't think the elk are very business friendly, nor have the acumen to develop any businesses. Relab relatively small hydrogen helium gas giant Poly Polino remains underdeveloped when its sister planet Metaponto gathered some attention. It was not always the case. In 2180, news stories seeded through the extranet claimed that Eleven Zero was being found on Polino's moon on record loads. This turned out to be a scam spread by Tunawarashum Consortium and Elkor Corporation. <laughs> Trying to scare up, up scare up investors. And that's a strange way to put it. After a small fleet of space probes, space probes scouted the area, the hype quickly inflated, and the myth only persists in the unwanted extranet email messages. Uh, okay, how will I already explore this in its entirety? Yeah, alright, we did. Okay, next, uh, next, uh, next thing, destroy the blood pack base. Okay, why not? Why not? It's the best I can say. Let's explore this, uh, sh this strike up a vessel or a vessel. Alright. Only two planets here. 
stream, actually. Uh. Boris Thor, named the Shining Sea in Old Bulls. Bulls Thor is so named for its boiling surface rich in glowing hot alumina, flecked with dark regions of carbon. The thick atmosphere of nitrogen and oxygen is no indicator of life, since its temperatures are simply too high. Uh, okay. Talisphia is a planet capable of supporting life, if that life happens to breathe ammonia. Discovered by Azar Explorer, the planet was used as a bargaining chip by the Citadel Council, who quickly drafted a colonization agreement with its wealthy client race, the Bolus. The Council would fund the Bolus colonization effort in return for, a massive trade, for massive trade benefits. With uncharacteristic enthusiasm, an enormous Bolus influx ensued, and the Council reaped the economic benefits for the dozen years before the colonization bubble burst. Today, the economy the good times on Talisphia are long gone. The modern Bolus businesses are cutthroat operations. Piracy is a great threat to shipping, and well armed criminals see the Bolus as easy prey. Because they are easy prey. It's not like they are crazy, they are easy prey. I, I'm guessing that Torians don't give a shit about this colony. A nice giant does out of a sky garden has bluish tinge from its hydrogen hydrogen methane atmosphere. Its actual tilt causes its seasons to vary widely in temperature. Uh, ice giant. Okay. Let's go back. Exploration music. Okay, let's leave that planet for last. Uh, Afras. A unique discovery of Afras is a heavenly twin. A planet in a star system that has not one but two worlds of sufficient mass to retain a nitrogen oxygen atmosphere within the hydal life zone of its barren star. Fossil evidence shows abundant vertebrates and evidence of a sapient terrestrial avian species in its Bronze Age. However, the only trace of contemporary life on, on the planet is the single-celled organism in its seas. All else has suffered from an extinction event, a series of massive impact that vaporized vast quantities of water and lofted the dust into the atmosphere. Hello, Mr. Holyum. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Exploring the galaxy. Early theories that this event was a collision with a fragmented asteroid have not been discounted. The impact craters were aimed direct directly at the habitation center. This makes... Uh, well, it could be that this was not the Reapers. Yeah. Because if it was the Reapers, then uh, then it would throw a lot of things into into um, uh, lore or, or lore wise uh, into question because the humans were not in the Bronze Age, they were in the Stone Age, when the Brothians uh, studied them. And certainly the, the Hanar were as well. The Water Race, or whatever you could call it. Uh, so if the Reapers destroy sentient species that are not that technologically advanced, Bronze Age is nothing. So working metals with furnaces. That's nothing. Uh, why they did not kill the humans? Or the Rohana or any other sa sentient species or sapient, that's how they call them. Uh, that is on their way to evolve. 
certainly they could destroy them. The Asari most certainly uh, would have been well past the Bronze Age. Uh, 50,000 years ago. So with any other uh, species. So uh, that's that's uh, something that does not fit very well with the lore, I would say. If it was in fact the Reapers. Because it could have been uh, another organic species. Some sort of a genocidal mania. Okay. The sister tragedy to extinction event in Afras Tosalnim was the rarest of jewels. A second planet, a second garden planet within the same zone as Afras. Not as old as his sister planet. Its fossil event indicates that it was home to abundant invertebrate sea life. However, similar craters to those in Onafras created a dust shroud that killed 99% of biota on the planet. The even spacing of the crates indicates a coordinated simultaneous attacks from points around the globe rather than an asteroid collision of our super volcanic scenario. Yeah. That would need to be explained. Why the Reapers would bother with an avian species in the Bronze Age? A jovial cat's giant, Ben Oska, weeping witness in Inferian Bowls, is a low density hydrogen helium planet with 35 moons. Later this year, 33 of the moons will be visible from a planet surface in con a conjunction, an event that will be recorded by space probes from all over the galaxy. Time to go to destroy the blood pack base. I've detected an anomaly. Nah. Alright, scan show a root base established on the planet's surface. Communications match no blood pack mercenary protocols. Numerous life signs did match more changing neology detected. The base material resources match our date on the weapons manufacturing components. Alright. 